Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna to show you how you can make an org chart in Microsoft 365, because we all just like to know where we sit in the world. We're gonna start with the basics of creating an org chart directly in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint using something called SmartArt. Then we'll look at how you can create an org chart in Visio on the web, which gives you a little bit more control. Visio on the web now comes for free if you have a Microsoft work or school account. And then we'll look at how you can make an org chart using Excel together with Visio. And finally, we'll also look at how you can make an org chart available in Microsoft Teams, in Outlook, or on office.com, and it'll be interactive. You're gonna learn a lot about org charts today. Let's check this out. First, we're going to look at how you can create an org chart using something called Smart Art. And I happen to be in PowerPoint, but you can also do this in Word or Excel. The flow is exactly the same. Here on the slide, you see a bulleted list of our org structure here at the Kevin Cookie Company. We have Patty Fernandez at the top. She's our president. And she has four direct reports. Here you see me. We also have Miriam, Lee, and then there's good old Nestor at the bottom. Miriam, Lee, and Nestor all have their own direct reports, so that's tabbed out one more time. This will help us when we use SmartArt. Let's select all of the data. You can highlight it all, or you could just press the shortcut key Control A to select this entire list. Then press the key Control X to cut it. We're going to use it again in a moment. Don't worry, it's not going to disappear. Now that we've cut the data, we are ready to make an org chart. Up on the top tabs, let's select the one called Insert. Then in the middle, click on Smart Art. This opens up the Smart Art dialog. And over on the left hand side, let's select the option that says Hierarchy. Here you see a number of different layouts that you can choose from. I'll go with the basic one, and we can always go back and change this again later. Next, I'll click on OK. And look at that, this now inserts an org chart directly onto our slide. We're making some good progress. Now I can click onto the org chart and click into these rectangles and I can start typing in some names. Alternatively, I can also go to this text field over on the side and I can type in names here as well. Now, you might have noticed that this text field has the exact same structure as that bulleted list that we looked at earlier. So instead of recreating our list here, I can simply paste in the cut content. Here, I'll press Control A to select everything. Then I'll press Control V to paste the cut content. And here you see the org chart. Now it's pretty easy to create this. You can now customize what this org chart looks like. If you want to demote someone, over here in the bulleted list, you could simply press the Tab key. If you want to promote someone instead, you can press Shift Tab. And if you want to move someone up or down the list, you can press the Shift Alt and Up or Down arrow to move someone up or down the list. Now alternatively, you can also use these buttons in the top left hand corner and that'll do the exact same thing. Up here as well, you can also change the layout. By default, it's top to bottom, but here you have a few different options. You can also change the layout here as well. And earlier I said we would be able to come back to that, and here it is. So let's say, for example, I wanted to include photos as part of the org chart. I can do that here. Over to the side, I can also choose other colors. And here I can choose different styles for my org chart. So I have lots of different options. Although we inserted SmartArt, I can use all of my other tools to also modify what this org chart looks like. So let's say for example, there's a dotted line relationship between Megan and me. Right up here, I can click on insert and I'll insert a line shape. Here, I can draw it between me and Megan. Now by default, it's just a solid line, but I can change that. I'll go up to format shape and here I could click into advanced settings and then over on the right hand side, I can change this to a dotted line. So now we have a dotted line relationship. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, the one downside to call out, let's say I add another person to this org chart, it'll change up the formatting and the dotted line will no longer be where I want it to be. 
So I only recommend doing this once your org chart is in a final state. Next, we're going to look at how you can create an org chart using a program called Visio on the web. If you have a Microsoft work or school account, you can use this entirely for free. Let's head to the website office.com and in the top left hand corner, click on the app launcher. Next, click on Visio. This drops us on the Visio start page. And at the very top, you should see a selection of templates. If you don't, you may need to toggle them on. You can toggle them on or off by using this button. Right down below, let's click on the more templates option. This drops us on the templates page. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see a section with all of the different organizational templates. Right at the beginning, you have a basic template that just gives you access to all of the different stencils. And here we see two template examples. You have one for sales and you have one for HR. I'll click on the one for basic so you can see how it works from scratch. This now drops me into a new Visio drawing. And over on the left hand side, I have access to five different stencils. The first one is called basic. And here you can see what that looks like. I could drag one onto my drawing. Next up you have metal. And here you can see what that looks like. There's also one called Pinboard. Here's another one called Badge. And lastly, we have Rollout. So you could choose just one of these or you could even mix and match them together. Now, I just want to create a basic org chart. So here I'll go back to the basic stencil and I'll drag the executive object onto my drawing. And of course, an executive needs some managers. So here, let me drag some managers on as well. I also need some staff members. So here I can drag some of the staff member objects onto my drawing. Now I could also add text to any one of these objects. Here I can double click on it to modify the text. Now right now none of these are connected and I need to connect them. Here if I hover over the edge of any one of these shapes, it exposes this icon. I can now click on that and drag it to one of my shapes. And here I can go through and start connecting all of my different shapes together. Now you might be thinking this doesn't really look that organized, but don't worry, we can fix that. Up on the top bar, let's click on the org chart option. And here you can choose different layouts. Here I'll select the one that says top to bottom, but you have all of these other options as well. And this reformats the org chart and this now looks pretty good. Along with this, we could also click into design and here you can choose different colors or different styles or themes to make your org chart look exactly how you want it to be. Once you're all done in the top left hand corner, you can click on the file menu. If you go to save as you could save it as a PDF and then you could distribute it. You could also print it out. And here you also have the option to share this with others. Next up, let's look at how you can use Visio together with Excel. Within Excel, click on the insert tab up on top and then click on get add-ons. Here, simply search for Visio and then let's click on add next to the best match. Next, you'll also have to click on continue. And this now inserts a Visio object directly into your Excel spreadsheet. Now we have to choose what type of Visio object. You can insert a basic flowchart. They also have cross-functional flowcharts. And lastly, and this is what we're looking for, you can also insert an organization chart. Here when we click on that, we have a few different options. So you could choose the layout that you like the most. I'll go with the quick start option. This now inserts a table and an org chart directly into my slide. Now I can go in and update this table and that'll automatically update the org chart. So here, for example, I'll add myself to this table. First, I need to type in a unique ID. If I don't, I'll get an error message. Here I could type in my name. I'll type in my title. And I also have to indicate who my manager is. So here I'll make sure to put down the ID for Bianca. And lastly, I also need to specify my role. I'll put myself down as a manager. Now the org chart has not updated yet. Here if I hover over it, there's the option to refresh. And when I click on that, it takes all of the new entries from the table and it updates the org chart. 
This is a really neat option. You simply focus on the table and it'll automatically update the org chart based on the input there. Now, unfortunately, the only way to update this org chart is by using the table. If you want to actually customize what the Visio looks like, you need a premium Visio subscription, even though you can create Visio org charts on the web for free. To be able to print this out or share it or save it as a PDF, you can click on the ellipsis here and then open on the web. Now, by far, my favorite way of creating an org chart is simply directly in Azure Active Directory. This will make it available in Microsoft Teams and Outlook on office.com and across the entire Microsoft 365 suite of apps. Here, for example, I'm currently on the website office.com and I can type in the name Nestor Wilk into the search field. He's one of our directors here at the Kevin Cookie Company. I'll click on Nestor and this opens up his people card. And this includes all of his personal information here. And I know this is a YouTube video, so please don't try contacting him. Partway down, you'll see where he sits in the organization. You can see who his manager is, it's Patty, and you can also see who his direct reports are. Right down here, I can click on show organization and this will show me the entire org chart. And it's completely interactive. I can click on any other individual and this will drill down to their part of the tree. And here, if I double click on any one individual, this will bring up all of their contact details. So this is pretty cool, but how do you actually build this out? To do that, we need to have admin access. Back on office.com, over on the left-hand side, let's click into the admin portal. Once the portal finishes loading, over on the left-hand side, click on users and then click on active users. Here I see my own name. When I click on that, this opens up a pane over on the right-hand side. And here I can see who my manager currently is. If I click on that, I can edit who my manager is. Let's say if I want to change my manager, I can do that right here and then I can save my changes. Now, you might be wondering, why is Patty the president? Don't I run the Kevin Cookie Company? It's got my name. Well, at least in my last performance review, they told me I was more of a creative and Patty has managerial experience. At least that's what they told me. Back in the pane, you can also click on manage contact information. And here you can update things like the display name, the title, and all of the other information that shows up within your people card. There's all of this awesome information in Azure Active Directory. Can I use this with, let's say, Visio? And you sure can. Let's see how you can do it. To be able to pull this off, once again, you need admin privileges. And you also need PowerShell. Open up PowerShell and first off, we need to connect to Exchange Online. Type in the following command, but make sure to swap out my username with your username. Then it'll connect to Exchange Online. Next, you can type in the following command and this will get all of the user information from your tenant in the exact format that Visio is looking for. You could also modify where it's going to save this file. I'll click on enter and this has now created a CSV with all of my organizational information. Next, I can open up this file and I can copy all of these values. Now I'll go back to my other Excel sheet that had the org chart table and my org chart. I can now paste in all of the data from my tenant. Then I'll click into the org chart and then click on refresh. And look at that, I now have a Visio org chart based on all of my tenant data. All right, well, that's how you can make an org chart in four different ways. Let me know down below in the comments, which technique do you like the most? To watch more videos like this one, please consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.